you have a Toronto Blue Jays team that you couldn't find basically anybody outside of myself to talk about without glowing optimism ever. Oh, Matt Chapman, Kevin Gausman. Nobody talked about Robbie Ray or Marcus Simeon. Apparently, Donnie, they were going to go unbeaten because nobody was going to have rosters in Toronto because of the vaccine. It turns out that was only the Kansas City Royals. Maybe we'll have a chance to get into that insane headline in a minute or two. Ultimately, though, in the midst of a wild card race, on the heels of a victory, Toronto fires their manager as they sit now 47-42. and 42. What did you make of this decision here by the Blue Jays? I didn't mind it. And some, when you're an un, underperforming team, which the Toronto Blue Jays, quite frankly, are here in 2022, aspirations of winning a division, they're up in smoke because of how good the Yankees have been. But it seems like they just needed a kick in the butt here to sort of get moving forward. And it's not to say, I mean, when we're talking about managers, coaches, whatever, throughout professional sports, maybe the Major League Baseball manager is the least, you know, effective because everything is basically on a computer No more of those gut feels back in like the 70s, 80s, and 90s, when to pull a pitcher, when to leave them in. It's basically you can't go above this certain number of pitches and lefty-righty splits, and here's my computer printout of my lineup two hours before the game, and I just paint by numbers the rest of the way. But it just wasn't working out in Toronto. So it looks like you get that little boost here. But also, let's hasten this year right now. They're not playing better because their manager got fired. They're playing better because they're playing the Philadelphia Phillies, who are just a dead team right now. I mean, this team just limped up to Toronto. It's almost like they're waiting for the all-star break. Yeah, a couple guys not going to be able to play in there. A few starters sitting out, change up the pitching staff, go with a bullpen game here. Oh, yeah, but we got Zach Wheeler on the mound, who looked like he's already on vacation at this point from that performance yesterday. Philly's got two hits yesterday, and he had 11 hits out of the Toronto Blue Jays. So maybe it does wake them up a little bit here before the deadline, but also you brought up a good point here. We talked about before the season, do the Toronto Blue Jays have a decided edge playing in Canada because of the strict COVID-19 protocols that they have? But take a look now. Philadelphia Phillies went up there, down four or five starters. Then they're going to get the Kansas City Royals, who are already a bad ball club, down 10 players. Could this be one of those where they head off into the All-Star break, Kevin? Five straight Ws and looking to make that charge in the second half feeling good? Sounds like it's a perfect storm for them right now. I guess so. On the vaccine thing quickly, uh, the Royals, I mean, the headlines that were pouring in were felt, they felt fake. It felt like I was getting, I was like 40% of the roster. I think it was reading that wasn't going to Toronto. Hold on a minute. Like, I mean, was, were were the Kansas City Royals exclusively signing unvaccinated players? Like, isn't like the entire league at like a 90% threshold? I like, I don't like, what is there, like, 150 unvaxxed players and 25? Like, how many guys? You know what I'm saying, Donnie, here? Like, how did Kansas City have this many guys? It, like, and also, it's like all of their best players. It's like there was an intended tank. You would have thought that the, the Royals were tanking in the AL East and, like, this is great. We'll lose, like, 10 games automatically to Toronto. 